Hi buddy, Matt back again. Right, okay, it's been a while since I've done a video and I'm really sorry about that. It's been over a month or so and I did promise some um, solo battle reports and that last time I did one, which I will do in the next week or so. Um, I, I don't know, just kind of haven't really got around to doing anything historical in the last couple of months. I think mainly I'm trying to keep this as a historical channel and um, I've basically focused on, I've been starting Age of Sigmar because um, Games Workshop brought out 3rd edition rules and basically I've been really enjoying painting quite a few models for the um, uh, Sob like Gravelords army and I've played a, a tournament and quite a few games of that so I've kind of, um, I've kind of vied away from uh, historical a little bit Okay, but now I am back with the Franco-Prussian War. Okay, so I will probably stick the Age of Sigma stuff up, but I, I'm fearful of losing subscribers uh, because I know the you know the people kind of think GW is quite a sort of you know they don't like the kind of company policies and the pricing and all that sort of thing. But to be honest, you know their models are absolutely gorgeous, and for a modeler. Um, and for a painter, they are fuck. They are sorry, nearly swore there. They are lovely to paint. Okay, uh, and you cannot argue against that. All right, so I might stick them up if people are interested. All right, and I've done quite a few, so that'll be quite a large video. Okay, please don't unsubscribe because I put some GW stuff up. I don't think you will. None of you are that petty, are you? Anyway, on to what I've just started to do recently. So I've pretty much come to the end of my um, English Civil War stuff. I think I've got maybe one, just one more small unit of pikemen to add to that, and that's pretty much complete then. I've got quite a large army there. I've got three battalions. Okay, um, that will be enough. Um, I'm still working on Wars of the Roses, although that's on a slight hiatus because I need to get hold of some flags and just kind of think about how I'm going to do command sprues. But what I have moved on to now, and this is something that I promised myself I wouldn't do, okay, is Franco-Prussian War. Um, now, I started this a while ago because I actually got the um, Eagle of, Eagles of Empires Empire um, miniatures and the rules for their game. Um, but recently, as you all know, of course, the Perrys have now brought out Franco-Prussian War sets as well. So, uh, on the right, we've got the um, the advancing infantry, so uh, infantry that are basically running or marching. Okay, I'll show you what they look like in a moment. Uh, and on the left, we've got um, skirmish lines. So these are troops that are firing, loading. Um, uh, they're offering their um, guns on port. They're stabbing with their um, their bayonets, etc., etc. Okay, so they brought out two boxes for the Franco-Prussian War range. There's 39 in each box. Each box contains a sprue of four um, uh, command. Okay, which I'll show you in a second, and 35 miniatures in each box. Okay, so what I'm not going to do is unbox these because I already have unboxed them. All right. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm not going to show you anything on the sprues because other people have already done that. Okay, but what I'm going to show you is what I've done so far. So, um, these guys are the uh, command unit that you get. Okay, so basically you get uh, on the command sprue, you get a drummer. Okay, go on the right. You get a uh, officer. Okay, now. For most of the uh, in in battalions and in regiments, that's probably going to be a major. Okay, um, he would be the uh, commander of a, a battalion. Okay, and then probably a lieutenant as a commander of a company. Doesn't matter what you use him for; it could be either. You get a bugler and you get a standard bearer. Okay, so you know you the command sprues are quite good you only get two though and you get you know if you combine two boxes together you've got 70 troops all together so you probably need a third or fourth command sprue okay so that's the command sprue um on the sprues themselves you can create uh different types of troops so you can do uh fusiliers okay you can do uh landwehr okay um, and you can also put them in the uh, forage caps. Okay, so I put a drummer in a forage cap. So there's three different types of uh, head uh, wear. All right, 
on the left you've got the, the fusiliers okay the guys at the uh, pickle helms okay um, in the middle you've got the uh, landwehr okay uh, so they've got like the the shako the landwehr shako and you can tell it's landwehr because it's got a let's zoom in slightly can you see that it's got a little cross on the front of the shako okay that indicates the landwehr um, and then on the on the right you've got the um, forage hat okay they all had forage hats took them off when they weren't in battle okay but what i've done is i haven't actually given any of my units forage hats because after all you're going to be fighting a battle all the time so why would you do that okay so let's just move these out of the way so i can show you what some of these look like so the guys who are basically in the um in the uh advancing box Pretty much, you could put them into. The, there's about four. There's five different poses, but the majority of them, they end. They'll they'll look like this. They're either running and holding their um, holding their bayonet, okay, uh, or a long knife, and then on the left hand side, they've got the guys marching. So, I didn't really use. I didn't put many in marching poses because I didn't really want them marching into battle. I prefer the skirmishing fighting poses and the firing poses. So what you can find, if you do buy both boxes, you will actually have enough from the skirmishing box to make more people who look like they're skirmishing in the advancing box. Okay, So you don't have to have ranks and ranks and ranks of guys marching. All right, unless you really want to do that, of course. But I think that's more applicable for Napoleonics, really. Because in the Franco-Prussian War... The Prussians especially, and possibly the French as well, they they did tend to fight in close formation, but they also broke out into open formation quite often, and they were quite individualistic in their fighting formations. And this was really, you know, we're talking about a turning point and the emergence into a more modern form of warfare, where companies were much freer in their actions. They weren't just marching towards the enemy in a line um, like in the Napoleonic Wars. You know, it was more like the way that they began to work in the American Civil War, where, you know, there was much more skirmishing going on, open formations, okay? And they do, I mean, on the boxes, the Perry suggest that, but I've also read elsewhere that they might start in a closed formation, but then they would probably break out into an open formation as the battle progressed. So I don't really want too many guys that look like they're just marching doggedly towards the enemy, okay? So, how am I? Another thing I did, and uh, uh, this is a, a slight criticism of the Perrys, is every single uh, soldier has their bayonet fixed to their um, gun, okay? Every single one has got a fixed bayonet, which is a bit of a shame, really, because they didn't all have fixed bayonets, okay? Um, and so, if you want uh, the, um, uh, the, the uh, rifles to the the needle guns to not have bayonets you're gonna to have to cut the bayonets off which is a bit of a shame okay so another thing that i wanted to look at as well was the difference between the eagle of eagles of empire um figures okay these guys and the the perry's uh miniatures so how do the two of them look side by side okay how do, how do they look now some of you might have the eagles of empire miniatures already they're metal okay um and they look pretty good don't they they actually work side by side they're about the right height they're about the right size and shape okay um obviously there's a couple of slight differences the eagles of empire has got the 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 uh, canteen on the top whereas the um the Paris has got it halfway down okay um, there are a couple of slight differences, but that's good because it gives more variation. <clears throat> There's a slight difference with the uh, the great coat that's been rolled up and put over the shoulder. Eagles of Empire one has got the kind of the ends of the great coat at the bottom. The Perry's one has got the ends of the great coat at the top. But that's good because that actually gives some kind of variety across the different troops. Now I'm going to, I will show you the Eagles of Empire ones that I painted up so far. Okay, um, but essentially. That means for me, they're not going to look out of place when they're in kind of combined units and they're kind of put together. 
Okay, so I'm quite pleased about that, that it's going to go with the ones that I've already got from Eagles of Empire. Okay, so how have I organised my units? So I've got 70 troops all together, okay, and what I decided to do was I decided to do um, 40 uh, fusiliers, okay, 40 fusiliers um, in with the, the helmets, okay. I've done 20 um, landwehr, okay, 20 landwehr, uh, bear in mind I've got 70 altogether, okay, from two boxes, so 40 fusiliers, 20 landwehr, and I've also done 10 um, Jaegers. Now, this is where you need to be a bit kind of canny with the these models, because as I said already, they um they've all got um bayonets attached okay so i basically had to cut the bayonets off the uh, the needle guns okay and then paint them up as jaegers now jaegers were skirmish troops exactly the same as the uh, voltigers and jaegers in the napoleonic wars their role hadn't really changed okay um they wore green um you green tunics and green hats um but otherwise everything is the same color as the fusiliers so they'll have black boots and um they will have red cuffs okay and black um um uh pouches and things like that okay so 10 jaegers so um the way i'm going to organize it as well so that's 70 troops all together so 40 20 and um 10 all right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to organize these onto bases of two um two uh models okay so these are the uh empires of e eagles of empire um models okay painted up they're a little bit shiny in the camera but there's not that shiny in real life okay so i've already painted these guys up Okay, and started to put them on bases of two. Now they're on um, forty by forty bases. All right, forty mil by forty mil bases. Now the reason why I put them in groups of two is I want a more open order, so I can put them basically side by side. I can start to kind of organise them side by side. Um, but if I want to, once they've kind of advanced and moved in this position. I can then kind of break them up into more open formation. Okay, they would look look like they were less in an open formation if they um, were, you know, four on a base or three on a base. So I want to kind of keep it open. And then if I'm playing something like Black Powder, for example, I could use um, five bases for a standard unit, seven bases for a large unit, three bases for a small unit. OK, so it doesn't, you know, black powder, it's all about the frontages, it's all about the base sizes. It's nothing to do with the number of models on the base. So, you know, I'm going to be able to do that for if I'm playing black powder. OK, so that is my thinking in terms of my organisation. So who is my army? What am I going to kind of um, base my army around just put these guys back in shot while I'm talking okay so what I decided to do is I've decided to basically the composition of my army is going to be it's going to be the um, the the, the se second art the fir se first army sorry it's going to be the seventh brigade okay um, it's going to be there's get there's basically two uh, two infantry regiments within the uh, uh, 7th Brigade. Um, it's 1st Westphalian and Hanoverian regiments. Um, and then there are uh, there are two other... Um, then the 2nd Brigade has two more infantry regiments. Okay, So four infantry regiments altogether across two brigades. Um, and then within that brigade, basically, you have uh, three battalions. And within each battalion, there are four companies. Uh, there's 250 men per company, 1,000 men per battalion, 6,000 men in each brigade, and 12,000 men in each corps. So it's basically the, uh, sorry, this 1st Army, 7th Corps, okay, 
and then two brigades from two brigades within that uh, seventh corps i'm going to have two regiments from one brigade and two regiments from a second brigade so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to create at least um two um brigades on the um on the battlefield so within that brigade you basically have two infantry regiments you'll have a jaeger company a guard company artillery um and some horse okay so probably hussars yeah okay possibly some cuirassier possibly okay so that would be basically the way it works and that's kind of the organization of division uh within uh within a, within a corps so you know army corps division so within the division you know you would have your brigades which would basically be your um, your infantry brigades but then attached to that you would have divisional units such as the jaegers and the guard and the the cavalry and the artillery all right so when they were uh, um, organized on the battlefield uh, for black powder you know the brigades will basically have a composition of different mixed troop types within them okay most of that will be infantry okay so the way i'm kind of working at the moment is i'm thinking about um essentially uh the, so the first westphalian the second westphalian the hanoverian okay um, and one of the infantry brigade so what i need to do when i paint these guys up um they're all pretty much the same in terms of the way they look okay they've all got these kind of dark blue um tunics they've all got their gray dark gray um legs they've all got uh, black boots black helmets um these guys uh in front of you I actually painted them with a white um uh epaulette okay um but that's actually wrong so i'm gonna to need to repaint these because if i'm doing uh first westphalian second westphalian um in fact if it's the the seventh core then i'm probably gonna to have to do them with light blue epaulettes and that will be the same for the jaegers um and it'll probably well actually the jaegers will be slightly different probably white okay and also the land there will be a different as well so um so that basically is it that's where i am at the minute in terms of the uh, franco prussians so like i say i've already painted up about 16 uh to 18 of the um the empires of eagles troops they do fit quite nicely with the with the parish troops okay so there's not gonna be any kind of issue there in terms of mixing and matching different styles of uh, of models all right um i'm quite pleased with the way the jaegers are coming along at the moment just started to paint the jaegers um with the with the green um and the and the gray okay quite like these guys actually um and like i say i took the i cut the um uh uh bayonets off them because i just wanted them to use the the dracer rifles the dracer um needle guns as they as they are okay uh, and also if you look at the uh eagle of empire um figures the, they they don't have um they don't have bayonets as well they've just got the the dracer without a bayonet okay which i i thought was quite nice okay Ooh, perspective okay <laughs> right okay um, like I say, I haven't got any um, cavalry at the moment. I haven't got any artillery either. So uh, the further I go down this rabbit hole, that's when that's going to actually work. Okay, I'm going to actually get those guys. The one thing I have got is I've got a commander. Okay, at the moment. Okay, uh, from Eagles of Empire. So he's a general figure. Um, he's a guy who did that insane cavalry charge. Can't remember his name actually. Um, so he he's pretty much the only kind of army commander figure that I've got at the moment. So if I'm, you know, if I'm intending to go even further down this path uh, with the Prussians and the Franco-Prussian War, then um, I uh, will need some more commanders. Uh, just a little bit of thing about painting. What I've decided to do with the paint is basically I have painted the um i've sprayed the fusiliers with army painter blue spray okay and then all i've done with them is i have then um added um ultramarine contrast paint okay over the top so i've just basically painted them with ultramarine contrast paint just to give them a dark 
dark blue look. Okay, can't quite see it there on the camera. It's darker than it actually looks. It's darker in real life than it looks. Okay, and then obviously done the great coat grey, okay, and the legs grey as well. So I'm kind of on this. It's basically a process at the moment with these. And then with the um, with the Jaegers, okay, I've basically put on two coats of um, Creed Camo, contrast paint Creed Camo on those. So I'm trying to do them in a fairly quick and easy way without, um, you know, I've got a lot to paint. So, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time painting mass troops um, in that way. Okay. So... Hopefully that's pretty interesting to you. Hopefully you may be thinking you won't be thinking about Franco Prussians yourself. They're they're really nice to kind of organise, and you know if you can put them into organise them into, you know your Fusiliers, your Landwehr, and your Jaegers. That's pretty much all you need for your infantry. That's that's pretty much all they had in terms of infantry. When it comes to things like guard units, even though uh, some uh, companies. Um, sorry, battalions and regiments were guard regiments. They were only called that. The they weren't. It wasn't the same as in the Napoleonic Wars where the guards were massive guys, big guys, the most experienced troops. It was simply an honorary title. All right. So the guard regiments really don't look that different from the uh, Fusilier regiments in um, in the Franco-Prussian War. So you know you could basically create a unit, maybe just change the colour of the epaulets slightly. Um, and called them a guard regiment. They don't. They don't have different hats. They don't have diff wildly different uniforms, and they don't really behave in a different way. Okay, right, guys. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope it was interesting for you. Sorry for not posting up for quite a while, but now we're back on it. Okay, I'll probably try and get another couple of videos out in the next couple of weeks. Um, stay safe, and uh, see you next time.